Yeah. Man, do we all mess up a lot of things in fantasy football. Got a lot of stuff wrong this year. Got a lot of stuff right this year, I think. But that's how this shit goes. Every year, the first video I do in the offseason, we like to lay out the rules. I'm going to get a lot of shit wrong. You're going to get a lot of shit wrong. I'm going to get a lot of shit right. You know how the math adds up there. We're here to have a good-ass time, okay? But we're here to make some predictions for 2023. And I've learned from my mistakes, so I'm guaranteeing a 100% hit rate for every prediction I have from now until September 7th when drafts are done. I'm not getting another thing wrong for the rest of my life. Okay, so today we're doing five of my early, early, early fantasy football predictions for the great year of 2023. Let's start the 101 of this list with the 101 of next year. When all is said and done, Christian McCaffrey will be the consensus number one overall pick in fantasy football. At first, it's going to be Justin Jefferson. I think that's how the narrative is going to start. I think most people are going to say, hey, I feel more comfortable with Jefferson. I feel like he's continuing to enter his prime and go straight elite mode on everybody's ass. And then I think as the summer progresses, more people will, as it naturally happens in fantasy football, start to lean more towards the running back position. And if these two are at the tiebreaker, 101-102, C-Mac will eventually move over to the 101 consensus, right? We look at what he did this year, started as a, as a Panther, of course, moved midway through the season to San Francisco. So I wanted to break down, like, you know, I knew he was good in San Francisco, but how good actually was he when we just look at those splits? So if you take his 11 games that he played in San Fran and we spread them cheeks out to 17 games, here's what we have. 347 opportunities, 326 touches, 246 of which were rushes, 80 receptions, 1,870 total yards from scrimmage, 15 and a half touchdowns, 320.2 half PPR fantasy points, which would have been good for RB1 overall right above Eckler this year. Now we're talking about splits that came from you know, he had uh, the first game, which he got like eight carries. He was not acquainted with the playbook yet, right? So I think that held those numbers down a little bit. Moving midseason is just crazy, right? We can't expect the same production levels as someone who had been there all offseason. Now he's got the entire offseason to get acquainted with this incredible offense that just racks up points for uh, running backs in the backfield. We've seen Kyle Shanahan lead NFL seasons where his running back performs at an outrageous rate. That We've seen RB1 seasons out of his fantasy running backs, and I think that will be the narrative around this summer. It'll start Justin Jefferson, and it'll slowly shift over to Christian McCaffrey. Number two, we've seen a, an awakening at the quarterback position where late round QB is not really a viable option anymore. You don't want to be starting dudes who can only stay in the pocket when you have guys like Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen putting up running back type numbers, running back type beat at the quarterback position. So my prediction, this is maybe a little bit more of a bold prediction for 2023 fantasy football. I think we will see four quarterbacks, and this is pertaining to one QB leagues. I typically play in super flex, but I know a lot of y'all that watch fantasy football stuff playing one quarterback leagues. And I think it's kind of just a more interesting discussion around the quarterback position to begin with. But four quarterbacks will be drafted inside the first 30 picks of next year's draft. That is the first two and a half rounds of a normal 12 team fantasy football league. We can get more specific. I think the obvious ones are Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, and Justin Fields. Personally, I'll be taking Justin Herbert like two rounds later, you know, fourth round, fifth round, whenever he ends up going. Uh, I, I just don't imagine there were many championship teams this year that did not have at least one of these guys on the roster. You know, if you're playing in a super flex league, maybe you had two of these guys because Fields was obviously a later pick. Hertz went maybe third round. You could have captured him there. But these dudes actually give you an advantage at a position that scores the most overall fantasy points. I don't know my initial feelings on whether or not I would pull the trigger on something like that, but I could tell you that the discussion about late round quarterbacks will pretty much be dead and over. It started last year with, we were peeling off the tape a little bit. We started to unveil the fact that we probably should be targeting quarterbacks in the middle rounds. Guys like Jalen Hurts and in the championship teams that I had, Jalen Hurts was the quarterback. So I could see him being a really, really top heavy pick this year, flirting with top 15 status, but definitely like end of round two, early round three, I feel like will be reserved for a lot of these Q Bs. Number three on this list of predictions, early, early predictions for 2023 fantasy football is that Amon Ross St. Brown and Jamison Williams will be next year's Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Now, what I mean by that, I don't know if I mean the 
necessarily the 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 level of production i'm almost like crafting the storylines and the narratives for what this off season will like i i said this i think a month ago that exact statement pretty much but i'm putting it on record and putting it on paper now so in two months three months four months when you hear that storyline we've already predicted it i think that's like the way a lot of analysis is going to be put around these two where you might have been hesitant to go for one of the Miami wide receivers you might have been hesitant to go for both of them you might have been hesitant to go for one of them because there was another really good or, or young upcoming explosive uh, high production wide receiver on the other side of him turns out it didn't fucking matter turns out I think a lot of people probably learned their lesson this year that uh, there's no reason not to draft one of if there's two wide receivers on a team that are both awesome you could draft both of them. You could draft one of them. When you look at the top 10 fantasy wide receivers for this year, 40% of them are made up of players on the same team. Four out of 10 of them. All right. So you look at Tyree Kill, wide receiver three. Jalen Waddell, wide receiver seven. A.J. Brown, wide receiver five. Devonta Smith, wide receiver 10. That obviously doesn't in take into account Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, who both could have made that list had they not both got hurt this year, banged up, left games early. So I think you'll see a lot of the same narrative where it's like, okay, I'm on Raw, elite player. I think some people might be a little bit pulled back in the fact that they're like Jamison Williams. If you've just watched any of his snaps yesterday over the last couple of weeks, he gains separation so easily over the top and down the field that he's such an easy buy. But he still hasn't had the production yet, so people will not draft him, obviously, where these other wide receiver twos are going. So I think you'll get a discount on both of these Lions players, and they're going to be the two that are talked about as... Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle of this year that both explode, that both are high production, that both uh, can lead you to a championship, even if you're starting both of them on a weekly basis. So love that tandem of Detroit Lions wide receivers, even if it is Jared Goff again. You know, it might not be. They'll probably pick a quarterback that's a rookie. Uh, I don't know if they'll start him right away, but it doesn't matter because they just showed that Amon Raja showed that he could do with Jared Goff, and I, I don't think that'll be a problem for Jamison Williams. And speaking of Jamison Williams, number four leads me to this year's rookie class of wide receivers, and it feels like we just say this every single year, but man, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, George Pickens, Chris Olave, Jahan Dotson, Christian Watson, Jamison Williams, Traylon Burks. I don't know if I would consider any of those guys a bust. I don't think there was a single first round wide receiver that you can consider a bust. Maybe some of them didn't like, like Jahan Dotson, Traylon Burks did not produce to the level of Garrett Wilson, and Drake London, but you saw, I think, enough positive momentum from both of those dudes that I, f I feel good. If I'm like a Titans fan, I don't feel phenomenal because you got rid of fucking A.J. Brown, of course, but Traylon Burks, I feel like you can't look at him and say oh, he was an outright bust for this year. I think he did a lot of good things, and I think there's a lot of progression to go for him, but I like Traylon Burks. You look at those seven wide receivers, I think all seven of them next year are top 36 wide receivers. I think we have seven coming out of this previous class that are wide receiver threes or better. I tweeted this out earlier uh, on Twitter this morning, so make sure you're following me there, at Nick Ercolano, but I was asking y'all for your early predictions for 2023 fantasy football, and I saw an overwhelming number of people just throwing out, like, Chris Olave is a top 12 wide receiver. Chris Olave is a wide receiver one. I want you to get a little bit more creative with it, obviously. Those are very arbitrary numbers, and they're not really fun to look at. They're kind of lazy, and they're kind of boring. So I want you all to drop in the comment section. Don't be fucking lazy or boring. I'm going to harass your account. I'm going to mute you. I'm never going to let you back in the comment section again. Something that you predict for 2023 fantasy football. Drop the comments down below. Hit this button down below while you're already in the vicinity. And yes, I think like Garrett Wilson, Drake London, Chris Olave, uh, Christian Watson for sure has crazy upside. Like all those guys have top 12, top 10 wide receiver one upside for sure. It was just an absolute breakout class, a smash class at the wide receiver position. I think all seven of those dudes that I just named end up easily finishing within the wide receiver 36 or better range. And while we're on the rookie class, let's look at the upcoming rookie class. And the last prediction, number five on this list is University of Texas running back Bijan Robinson will be a consensus first round fantasy football pick in 2023. Six foot, 220 pounds. This guy does pretty much everything at an extremely high level. He's built to be a three down workhorse. He's not even 21 years old yet. He's young. He's explosive. He's, he can catch passes, his balance, his vision, all the shit that people like to throw out as buzzwords. He will, um, he will almost guaranteed be a first round pick in the NFL draft, which always leads to really, really high volume in his rookie year. There have been, depending on where you look, obviously you could find the answer. You, you could find whatever answer you're looking for anywhere that you search for it. But there have been a lot of comparisons to where Saquon Barkley was drafted in the NFL. 
and pe- most people are saying that B. John Robinson will probably be the most highly drafted running back in terms of NFL draft capital since Saquon Barkley. So top 10 is definitely not out of the range of outcomes. NFL teams do stupid shit all the time, all right? Top 10, top 15, top 20. He's been linked to the Bills. He's been linked to Miami. He's been linked to the fact. Like, all of these things are real outcomes. I think he's going to be drafted very, very high in the NFL draft, which will in turn, because he's such a talented player, shift over to fantasy football. We shouldn't be scared of rookie running backs anymore. We've seen what they could do year in and year out, especially the highly drafted ones with high draft capital. Bijan Robinson will be a consensus first round fantasy football draft pick in 2023. And those are five of my early predictions. I'm not out here trying to just make hot takes for the sake of making hot takes. So if you guys have been following Bijan Robinson, you know he's a baller, you know he's a monster, you know he's going to be a high fantasy football pick. But I want to start getting players on your radar. I want to start getting them takes out so that when other people copy my take, I can. I can hit him with that cease and deceased, that cease and these nuts, you know, hit him early, hit him off and hit him hard. Hit the comment section with your 2023 early predictions for fantasy football. That's it for right now. This offseason, let's uh, let's talk about this for a little bit. Uh, Noah, who's been doing the prize picks plays on Thursday nights for the last 18 weeks or whatever. He is a, a dynasty and rookie running back more in particular monster so he's going to be doing a ton of content on the channel i believe two videos a week covering rookie and dynasty content so if you're in that game amazing if you've never played in a dynasty league what i would suggest you do is go join our discord the link is down below i believe at some point maybe next month we will start to set up leagues for bdge fans that we can get you guys into dynasty leagues playing against each other and set them up correctly so that the longevity of the leagues last and they're fun and they're fucking exciting uh so we're gonna do a lot of dynasty rookie content in the off season let me know what other type of content you want to see throughout the next few months before the nfl draft hits into the summer etc etc we will be here we'll never leave you i love you and i'm out and i hope you guys won your championships i didn't even fucking bring that up but whatever we're on to 2023